all welcome to the 64 bit edition of the security tube linux assembly expert course and certification now in this video we will look at the very interesting bit shifting instruction set so the first instruction we will take up is shift left or shift arithmetic left both of which do the same thing now as you will see in bit shifting, the carry flag has an interesting role to play uh, in most of the instructions. So let's say that this is the initial state. Uh, you have the carry flag and you have an operand. And after that, you issue an instruction to shift left by one bit. What happens then is that the most significant bit which is there of the operand is replicated into the carry flag. So in this case, it was one. So we basically got one in here when we shifted left by one bit. The least significant bit is automatically, uh, you know, put in as zero, right? So let's look at a live example to understand this better. You can download bit shifting uh, hyphen 64.nasm from below the video. So here is the code right and what I'm going to do is let me just open this in a new tab so that we can follow as we go and I could probably put bit shifting nasm open read only I can go back in here close this and go ahead and use nasm to assemble LD to link and then our good friend GDB to load this up. Set the disassembly flavor to Intel, break on start, run it, layout the assembly, layout the registers. So the very first instruction in here. Uh, is really moving in this large number with the most significant four bytes all zeroed out and then the least significant four bytes all once that's why you see all the FFs in here right now as you can imagine if we first shift arithmetic left by 32 bits then what would happen is these zeros in here would actually get shifted out uh, the carry flag, of course, given that all the values being shifted out are zeros would continue to be zero. And after the 32 bit shift is done, we will basically see that all these FFs become the first four byte of the most uh, first four most significant bytes. And then you have zeros filling up their place. So let's go ahead and do the following step I this loads the value inside RAX. Great. Shift left by 32. And as you will clearly see, if you notice, we have the flags in here. The carry flag is not going to be set after the operation. You will see that. And there you go, right? If you notice, now the FFs got shifted into uh, the first four significant bytes, while the least four significant bytes got filled up with zeros and the carry flag was not set simply because we just sent out all the zeros now if we shift left by one again then the most significant bit currently is one and that gets shifted out into the carry flag so the carry flag would be set so let me hit a step i and there you go right carry flag gets set as you can clearly see and of course this value would change to reflect that one bit going out now the instruction CLC is basically clear carry so when we hit that instruction the carry flag would be cleared and there you go now let's look at the second instruction set which is shift right now, in shift right, the principle is again exactly the same, but now you would have to basically visualize the carry flag 
on the right hand side or basically the least significant bit if we do a one bit shift right would be replicated inside the carry flag right while zero would be inserted on the most significant bit side so let's go ahead and try this command out again very simply first we are going to move this value inside RAX let's do that now we shift right by one but in this case uh, the LSB is actually one already which means when we shift right the carry flag would be set and there you go the carry flag is set now if we go ahead and shift right by 31 more bits as you can clearly imagine the value in the RAX register now would become a zero and of course the carry flag would still be set because the last bit which got shifted out was still a one now let's clear the carry flag again with the CLC there you go now the next instruction basically would be shift arithmetic right so let's go back to the slides now shift arithmetic right is very interesting right and can be confusing so pay special attention now in the case of arithmetic right uh, the behavior is different when we have a positive operand versus when we have a negative operand okay so let's look at the positive operand case first so this is a positive operand you can clearly see that you know the sign bit is zero now when we do a shift right by one bit uh, the LSB the lower significant bit really is actually gone ahead and replicated inside CF while because it's a positive operand a zero gets filled up in the most significant bit let's go ahead and verify this so I'm going to load our familiar value again in RAX now it's a positive value I'm going to shift right by one of course because the LSB right now is one uh, currently when we shift right the carry flag would be set however because it's a positive value the most significant bit the leftmost bit will be zero and we can clearly see that right let's clear the carry flag again and let's basically look at what is going to happen when we have a negative value and we do the same thing so let's go back to the slides now let's assume the operand is negative as we can see the sign bit is set now when you do a shift right by one then what happens is of course the state of the least significant bit is replicated in the carry flag but because it's a negative operand one gets put in as far as the most significant bit is concerned so let's verify that let's move this value in let's shift right by one but remember now it's a negative value so the carry flag will be set but one will be moved in which would ensure that the value of RAX doesn't really change and we can clearly see the carry flag is set and RAX continues to be identical to what it was because one was moved in for the one bit which went out in the most significant bit which basically did not change the value of RAX as a whole fantastic now the next series of instruction is rotate instructions I'm just going to look at one of them ROR and basically you have ROL I'm sorry there is no LOL <laughs> there's RCL and RCR which you can look up yourself later on so rotate instructions are very interesting is that they do not discard any bits anywhere but rather rotate the bits around in the register right so let's go back in here and I have a very interesting formation 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 A B C D E F so at first let me go ahead and rotate this by 8 bits right 8 bits would really be rotating it by one byte which would mean the value E F at the very end would rotate and come here and everything else would shift 
So we moved this value into RAX and now I'm going to rotate by one byte. And as you clearly see, EF is now in the front and everything else shifted accordingly. Now, if I'm going to shift by 12 bits, let's basically see what happens. This is something for you to guess. And again, the formation changed. And of course, now to adjust everything, right? Uh, if you want to basically go ahead and get it back to the same formation, then you have to ensure that the final rotation is for a value uh, which basically compensates and everything adds up to 64. So 44 plus 12, 56 plus 8, 64. Now when we rotate now by 44 bits, we would basically come back to the same old formation where we were before. And there we go. Right? How the carry flag changes, I leave that as an exercise to you. It's very simple to figure it out. Of course, after that, we just have our exit syscall, which we can continue. There you go. So hopefully you found bit shifting rotation and all of that interesting. Uh, this is something which can come in really very handy. So keep this in mind. Uh, that's all I have in mind for this video. If you're enjoying all of this at Pentester Academy, we would really appreciate if you can recommend us to your friends and colleagues in the community. That's all my friends. See you till the next video. Bye-bye.